lot of great things are happening at your church. I hope that you will lean into it, get involved in this season as we continue to make a difference in our community and our world during this unusual time. And I hope that you've enjoyed Thanksgiving weekend. I hope you stuffed yourself with some turkey, some ham, maybe some mac and cheese. I'm getting hungry just talking about it. And uh, I hope that you have enjoyed time with your family this Thanksgiving weekend. But we're excited about the series that we're in right now called the Upside Down Kingdom and what an incredible series it's been and today we're going to continue that series with a message that I'm entitling It's In You. Look at your neighbor right there on the couch, maybe it's your, your mom or your dad or maybe it's that teenager, why don't you nudge them and say it's in you. Come on, encourage somebody, it's in you. You don't know what that means just yet but you will, I believe, by the end of this message. You know, when I moved to California, I found out that uh, one thing would be true that many people told me before I moved from Georgia to California, many people looked at me and said, do you realize what kind of culture shock that is going to be? How different people are and how different the culture is and how different the way people think is. And, you know, honestly, I remember looking back at them and thinking, well, we'll just have to see when we get there. And I, I, I got in California only to realize that um, some of that was true, that cultures really are different, that people think differently, they believe differently, they live differently. But one thing I did find out is that even though cultures can be different, people are really all the same. You know, it's important that you and I understand that not only did I go from a Georgia culture to a California culture, but me and you actually belong to a different culture. We belong not just to a different culture, but you and I as believers belong to a different kingdom. We reside in and believe that we are a part of a heavenly kingdom. And in this series, we've been talking about when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And as they did that, Jesus looked back at them in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, and this is what he said. He said to them, when you pray, Say it this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm encouraged by that prayer because I, more than anything in the world, and I pray that you as well, want the kingdom of God to come to earth. It is the will of the Father that his kingdom would not just stay there, but it would actually come here. But one thing I'm realizing more and more every single day is that the only way the kingdom gets here is if it first gets in you. How do I know this to be true? Because Jesus in Mark chapter 4 said it this way in verse 3. He begins to tell a parable and he says, Consider this, a farmer went out to sow seeds. And as he cast his seeds, some of it fell along the beaten path and soon the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell onto gravel with no topsoil and the seeds quickly sprouted since the soil had no depth. But when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and withered because they had insufficient roots. Other seeds fell among the thorns, so when the seeds sprouted, so did the thorns and crowding out the young plants so they could produce no grain. But some, somebody right there where you're watching say, but some. But some of the seeds fell onto good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded 30, some 60, and some even 100 times as much as was planted. If you understand this, then you need to respond, Jesus says. In verse 10, he says, Afterwards, Jesus and his disciples and those close to him remained behind to ask Jesus about his parables. It was funny that Jesus is teaching and yet the disciples are still not understanding what he's saying. And maybe you even feel that way at times when God is speaking to you, that you don't fully understand the direction in which he is taking you, the instruction in which he is given. So Jesus, being as kind as he is, begins to explain. And in verse 11, he said to them, The privilege of intimately knowing the mystery of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you. In other words, you get to see the kingdom up close, but not to the others where everything is revealed in parables. Or another version says uh, that they are hidden things. For even when they see what I do, they will not understand. And when they hear what I say, they will learn nothing. Otherwise, they would repent and be forgiven. 
Jesus is trying to stress the importance, and I want to stress the importance to you and to me today to know that if the kingdom of God is going to come to the earth, it first must get on the inside of me and you. And my question before you today is how is the soil of your heart? Because you have to understand in this parable, the seed is the kingdom, but the soil is your heart. How is the soil of your heart today? Is it thorny? Is it stony ground? Is it kind of hard? Is it, are you, are maybe pushing back against what God wants for your life and what he wants to do through you? Or is it good soil, soil that has been tilled up and has been prepared? The weeds have been picked and now when God plants something, something good can come out of it. I, I, I want your soil to be good soil. Why? Because the kingdom of God is in you. We are citizens of a different kingdom. Philippians 1 verse 27 says it this way. Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. I love this version, but there's another version that says, whatever happens, live as citizens of heaven. Whatever happens, you know, you and I are living in some unusual times, but I like the encouragement that Paul is giving his readers here because he's saying, hey, whatever happens, don't forget who you are. Don't forget what kingdom you belong to because if you'll give the, the right of the kingdom that lives on the inside of you and give it away to the world, I can get the kingdom of God to come to earth. How do we do it? We talked about the kingdom throughout this series and that the king, kingdom has a king. That the king has his rule. But how do we get the kingdom in the earth? I believe there's three things that citizens of the kingdom do. And I pray this helps you. If you would, just lean in right now. And as you, as you lean into this, I believe God will say something special uh, to you as you do that. So the first thing that citizens of the kingdom do is they seek. They seek. They seek the king and they seek the kingdom. Matthew 6, says it this way, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. That is good news for somebody watching today that is in need of a miracle. You're in need of breakthrough. You're in need of God to show up and do something in your life that nobody else has been able to do. You haven't been able to produce it for yourself. And let me tell you something. The way that those things come is when we seek the kingdom of God first. Citizens of the kingdom, they seek, you know, I remember as a child playing hide and seek. It was one of my favorite games. And I got to be honest and tell you that I wasn't really good at it because I would always tell on myself. I would always make a noise. I would always do something that would give my location away. But I enjoyed playing the game because I love the thrill of the chase. The thrill of the chase of just enjoying trying to find that person that I was chasing after. One thing I realize about the God that you and I serve is that we can seek after a God that doesn't hide from us. God is actually wanting us to come after him. He's wanting us to lean into him. He's saying, listen, if you will seek me, and this is what the scripture says, as Jesus is telling them in Matthew chapter 7, he says, ask and you shall receive. This next part is important. Seek and you shall receive. Fine, knock and the door will be open to you. In other words, God is sitting there right now, right there in your house, right there in your car, wherever you're watching and listening from today. And he's saying, if you'll come after me, I will show myself to you. If you will seek me, you will surely find me. Citizens of this kingdom seek after God. But you know, oftentimes we're too busy seeking other things, aren't we? I'm guilty of... Of, of worrying about things that ultimately I can't control. And I believe the enemy's number one tactic to keep you from seeking God is to get you seeking something else. He's, he wants to get you seeking the approval of others. He wants you to seek and, and go after that, that particular job or that particular relationship or maybe something. And those things aren't all bad things. But when they become the primary focus of our life, it leaves no room for us to seek after that which brings true fulfillment. I want to I illustrate this for you if I can for just a little bit because 
I believe that your priority in your life, when Jesus becomes a priority in your life, it increases the capacity for the other things that you're believing him for. Let, let, me, let me illustrate it in this way. This jar of rocks here is the things, this represents the things that we worry about. This is, you know, the car payment that we got to pay this week. This is how, how are my kids going to do in school this year because they're not in a classroom or or, or, or how are we going to pay the power bill because things have been cut at work? And what am I going to do? And these are the things we worry about. Maybe it's that promotion on your job. Maybe it's that college education. I, I don't know what it is that you stress out and you worry about. But this jar represents the worries and the cares of this life. And, but then there are some other things that we as believers and we encourage you to do on a regular basis. And you say, you know, well. You know, I want to I go to church. I want to be faithful in my church attendance. I want to honor God by being in His house. And that's important to me. And not only that, but I want to join a small group. I want to I discuss how to deal with difficult people. I want to get in a study that's going to enrich my life. I want to get around some other people that can encourage me. And I, I really need that in this season of my life. And you know, I really want to start honoring God. And this is a big rock because many people struggle with this one. Is, is I want to begin to tithe. I want to begin to honor God with my giving. I want to, I want to acknowledge that He is my source. And i got to start doing that. And you know, not only that, but I want to serve somehow. I don't know if it's through an outreach or maybe it's through a ministry in our church. I, want, I really want to get involved, but I just don't know if I can. Because if you'll notice in this particular jar is that when all the worries of life come first and those more important things come last, there's really not enough room for it all. And maybe you even feel that way. I don't have enough time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that happen. And maybe you're struggling right now thinking, how can I fit anything else in my life? But I want to show you something. What if you said, I'm going to start giving and watch God supply all my needs. I'm going to, I'm going to start serving. I'm going to get involved in a ministry. I'm going to, I'm going to maybe go to an outreach and get involved in helping those that are in need and I'm going to get in a small group because I need other believers in my life and not only that but I'm going to be faithful in my church attendance and I'm going to do whatever I got to do to be in church when you put those things first I want you to watch this all these other things these important things these things we worry about these things we care about guess what happens when we put God first when we seek the kingdom first watch this It all fits. There's room for it all. When God's kingdom comes first, when we as citizens of the kingdom begin to seek that rather than seeking these other things that so easily entangle us and distract us, it all fits. Maybe you need to look at somebody sitting right there next to you and say, it all fits when I put Jesus first. Not only do citizens of the kingdom seek, but they also surrender. They surrender. You know, when there is no resistance in you to the will of God, then heaven can come to earth. When you realize that nothing happens to you, in fact, everything in your life is happening for you. That's a word for somebody today that maybe you've been feeling like you don't know how to surrender. Maybe you've given God a little bit of yourself, but you haven't given him all of you. And can I encourage you, until you give him all of you, you can't get all of him. And somebody's watching right now and you've been struggling with surrender. But I've got some good encouragement for you today. Because the word of God says this in Psalm 37 verse 23 through 25. It says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. Ooh, that's a good word for somebody watching today because you maybe feel like you've been stumbling over some things in your life and some things have been difficult in this season. But God says, if you'll fully surrender, if you'll give me every part of you, guess what? In that moment, I'll begin to direct the steps. I need God to direct my steps. Why? Because without him, I stumble and fall over everything. Aren't you tired of being tripped up by the enemy? Aren't you tired of struggling with that temptation? Aren't you tired of being addicted? Aren't you tired of giving in to maybe something that you know 
you ought not to be given into. Maybe, maybe it's not any of those things. Aren't you tired of worrying? Aren't you tired of stressing and having anxiety and having fear? Can, can I tell you something today? All of that shifts and changes in the life of a citizen of the kingdom when you and I begin to surrender to the Lord. You know, Pastor Ian last week or two weeks ago said it this way, too often we want God to bless our agenda rather than fulfill his plan. That's a good word for somebody. Too often we want God to bless our agenda rather than to fulfill his plan. I want to illustrate it to you this way. And I know you're saying, Pastor Kyle, that's a lot of illustrations today, but I need you to get this. Why? Because God's trying to get his kingdom into the earth. And so I want you to lean in and listen as uh, I share this with you because uh, this is how many of us live our life. And so I'll illustrate it this way. And, you know, if I were to ask you, which chair you would choose to sit in today, many of you, probably based on your size and your height and your weight and different factors, you probably would choose this chair. Why? Because it's bigger. It seems to fit. It seems to make sense that I would sit there. I, I wouldn't sit in the, the kid's chair, but maybe if you're younger, you might say, well, this will suffice and this will do. And not only is this chair bigger and can hold more weight, but this chair is padded. It's more comfortable. It looks good on the outside. Man, this thing right here just, this makes more sense for me to choose this one. But what if I told you that this chair represents the will of God for your life? You would look back at me and say, but Kyle, God's got big plans for me. God's got, God's got great things ahead of my future. He's got things that are good for me and comfortable and make my life better. This is plastic. This is hard. This is little. It doesn't, I don't know if it'll hold the weight of my life. But this is the will of God for you. But how often in mind in your life are we too surrendered to our own plans and our own agenda that we actually choose a chair that looks comfortable? But what if I told you that the legs on this chair weren't fully screwed in? You, you say, well, I'll just come in and sit. Oftentimes when you take a seat at the table, you don't test the chair. You just have a seat. But what if something was malfunctioning about this chair? What if this chair really couldn't hold your weight due to the fact that there were some things that were loose in it? And I believe that is the case in many of our lives. But let me tell you something. When you fully surrender to God, it may not always look like what you think it should look like. But it can fully hold the weight of your life. And I'm a smaller guy, but if I were to sit down in this chair, it can fully hold, it can hold my weight. And there's some weight that you are carrying right now in this season of your life that God meant for you as a citizen of the kingdom to ne never carry. So what if you today make a conscious decision that I'm going to surrender to the will of God for my life as opposed to my own plans and my own agenda, though that looks really good and enticing, this is what's better for me. I believe that when you do that, everything in your life is going to change because as Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him and He will make your path straight and smooth. Removing obstacles, watch this, that block your way. That's a good word for somebody because when you acknowledge Him, when you surrender to Him, in that moment, we realize that God can do something in the path of our life that's been blocking us for so long. God can begin to make a crooked path straight. He can begin to smooth out the rough edges and begin to do some great things in mind and your life. And not only do we seek and surrender, but the third thing that citizens of the kingdom do is they serve. One very definitive characteristics of kingdom citizens is that we serve others. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 10, 35. He said, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. 
Jesus is the model of what bringing the kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus came down and he was the seed that was planted in the soil of the earth to bring the kingdom of God here. And when Jesus was on the face of this planet, one definitive characteristic of his life is he was always serving people. Anytime Jesus walked into a city, anytime Jesus stepped on the scene, he was constantly looking for a way to serve somebody. In John chapter 4, the Bible says he went to a well in Samaria. He had to go through Samaria and he went there. Why? Because he wanted to offer not just a drink of water to the Samaritan woman. He wanted to transform her life. Jesus was all about serving. What a great model for you and I as a citizen of the kingdom. I got a question for you. When was the last time that you served somebody else? Because Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, Paul encourages us with this. He says, put yourselves aside and help others get ahead. You know, culture tells us, no, you got to get ahead of everybody else. It's all about you. It's about your agenda. It's about your promotion. It's about your success. But Paul says, not so with citizens of the kingdom. We are to help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. That's a good encouragement for somebody today. That maybe you've been looking for a way to get involved. I want to encourage you to maybe find a place to serve. Maybe it's in our local community. Maybe to find a, an organization that you can come alongside of and serve the mission and the vision of helping other people. Maybe it's you getting involved, as we spoke about earlier, in a ministry in your church and finding a way to use the gift that's on the inside of you to expand the kingdom. Maybe it's you serving at an outreach and loving on people in a unique time that we find ourselves in. But we talked about the kingdom of God being in you. And in Luke chapter 17, verse 20 through 21, he says this. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees, he being Jesus... When the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there or here it is or there it is. For indeed, watch this, the kingdom of God is within you. Woo, that's good today because you need to know the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. When you came into a relationship with Jesus, the kingdom of God came to dwell and live on the inside of who you are. But the thing is this, if it's in you, it also has to come out of you. God is trying to bring the kingdom to the earth. Why does he want the kingdom to come to earth? Why? Because everything's better in the kingdom of God. You know, I've always heard it said like this about Texas and Pastor Mike would probably prove this to be true, but they always have told me that everything's bigger in Texas. The restaurants are bigger. The gas stations are bigger. If you've ever been to Bucky's in, in, in Texas, you know they got about 100 gas pumps at one gas station, largest gas station in the world. Everything's bigger in Texas, but let me tell you something. Everything's better in the kingdom. Everything might be bigger in Texas, but let me tell you, when you get in the kingdom of God, blessings begin to flow in your life. Miracles begin to happen for you. When you need healing for your body, you have a great source to turn to. The Bible says, when you get in trouble, look to the hills where your help comes from. Why? Because you're a part of the kingdom of God. But now, I want to encourage you with this. If, if kingdom citizens seek, surrender, and serve, how do we serve? Number one, if you're taking notes, here it is. We serve because we are creators. We're creators. I believe it's impossible not to be creative when you realize that you were made in the image of your creator. Look around you. Look around the world. If you were to go up to Yosemite National Park today, you couldn't tell me and you could not deny, I don't believe, the existence of an almighty God who created and painted this landscape of Yosemite National Park. Or maybe if you went up to the Sequoias today, if you went to the Central Coast, if you were able to see the magnificence of God's creation, you would realize that you and I are, in the citizen, are citizens of a kingdom because we know the Creator. You and I have creativity locked up on the inside of us because of one reason. And 
It's all because of what happened in Genesis 1.26 when the Bible says, Let us make man in our image. You were made in the image of God. You're an image bearer. Therefore, you are a creator. What is a creator? Here's the definition. A creator is a person that brings something into existence. I wonder what God is trying to get out of you and in the earth, and he's longing for you to use your creativity. Disney, Walt Disney had Disneyland here in California, but he said Disneyland isn't quite enough. I've got to do more. I've got to have something else. And he went to Orlando, Florida, and he looked in the middle of a marsh swamp field and he saw a place called Magic Kingdom. He, he saw another land, another land of wonder and magic and people would flock to. And he built this incredible place because he could see a kingdom that maybe others even couldn't see. He said, he's standing there with some investors and none of them could see the vision, but he saw the vision because he was a creator. But let me tell you something, more than it being about the magic kingdom, it's about the real kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And God's trying to say, it's more important in you than Disney. It's the kingdom of God I'm trying to get out of you. Number two, how do we serve? We are influencers. We're not just creators. No, we are influencers. And an influencer, the definition is this, a person who inspires or guides the actions of others. I believe more than ever before, it's important for me and you as influencers and citizens of this kingdom, not to be influenced, but to be the ones who influence others. How are you being influenced right now in your life? Are you allowing others to overtake the way you think, believe, and act? Or are you being the person who is influencing those around you? How are you using the influence God put on the inside of you? Are you creating good conversations with those who don't think and believe like you? Are you in your sphere or sector of society trying to make a difference with your influence? Because let me encourage you with this. A uh, teenager that maybe is watching me right now, maybe, you are, maybe you're 45 years old and you feel like nobody uh, thinks you have influence. But every person watching and listening right now, you got influence on the inside of you that God wants to use for his kingdom. That's a good word and encouragement for somebody today. Not only are we creators or influencers, but number three... We are expanders. And the, the, the definition of an expander is this. A person who increases the extent or scope of something. God is looking to you and to me to expand the kingdom of God on the earth. There are people living down your street right now serving at a cubicle across the way in your job that need Jesus. They need a relationship with him. They are walking through life aimlessly and stumbling over their own plans and their own decisions and they have nowhere else to turn. And God is saying, will you be the person that will expand and bring the kingdom of God to that place, that place in their life to where they can experience what you've experienced? Because if America and has ever needed revival, it's now. And I'm calling not just our church, not just those that are in this area, but I believe the whole church, the, the church at large has to step up and realize that we've got a great moment in front of us to shine the light of Jesus to those that need the kingdom. We are creators. We are influencers and we are expanders. We are the people of God sent to the earth to bring the kingdom of God to this place that we live and love. Right now, I want to I wanna pray for those of you that are watching that have been listening to this message. And you say, Kyle, that sounds really good. And, you know, you're talking about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God coming to earth. And you even said that it's in me, but... Pastor Kyle, I need a relationship with Jesus. I, I, I don't feel that the kingdom is in me yet. And let me encourage you. The Bible's made it really clear and really simple that if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, right now the kingdom of God can come and live on the inside of you. But here's the deal. It's not meant to stay there. It's meant to come out of you as you create, as you influence, and as you expand. So I want to pray for you. Those of you that are watching right now, 
that you want to begin a relationship with Jesus. I'm tired of sitting in the seat with the wobbly legs. It's padded and it's comfortable, but it's getting me nowhere. I'm ready to surrender fully to Jesus and His will for my life. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, today I need a relationship with you. I've tried this my way and come up empty. But today, I want what you want for me. So from this day forward, I'm all yours. I give my life to you. I want to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit, fill me, guide me, and show me how to be a creator, an influencer, and an expander. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen.